Good morning. Thank you all for being here on behalf of the Charles S. Hatch Post 79 of the American Legion. We welcome you to the Vietnam Veteran Day ceremony. And to start off, we'll ask the color guard to please present the colors. All rise. Present Hans. Order Hans. Please uncover as we welcome Chaplain LaPierre to give the invocation. O oh God of nations and of all men, we pause at this outset of this Vietnam War veteran ceremony to acknowledge together your sovereignty over our lives. Grant that it shall be no idle gesture no mere salute, no tradition, to tradition, dictated by custom, custom, but that in all sincerity, in keeping with the spirit and intent of this institution, dedicated to God and country, we shall seek to know and to do your will, infuse us, we pray with the desire to serve our comrades and our community in such a way as ensure freedom, future justice, encourage democracy, keep forever fresh in our memories the sacrifice made in other years and other circumstances by our fallen comrades to preserve that which is noblest and best in America. Grant us courage to defeat kindness in victory and in such understanding always for those who suffer our, or are in need that we may be instruments of the, your purpose for mankind. To that end, we salute you as Lord and pledge our best. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Also, while we're here, and because it is so appropriate, on a day like today. We have the MIA POW empty chair. A POW empty chair is placed at all official meetings of the American Legion as a physical symbol of the thousands of American POW MIAs still unaccounted for from all wars and conflicts involving the United States of America. This is a reminder for all of us to spare no effort to secure the release of any American prisoners 
from captivity, the repatriation of the remains of those who died bravely in defense of liberty, and a full accounting for those missing. Let us rededicate ourselves to this vital endeavor. Cover. Please be seated. Thank you all for being here. This is uh, it's a very meaningful day for a lot of us, and I, I just wanted to start first by asking those who are here in attendance who are Vietnam veterans to please stand up. You're a Vietnam veteran. I also, um, I also, there's some standing in the back too. Uh, I also want to say something that was never said to you when you got back, and that is welcome home. Thank you for your service. Thank you. We do remember those days, and uh, this is unscripted, but I just, I just remember that um, when we did get back home, we were on our permanent posts and bases. Um, we were told that when we left the base, not to wear our uniforms, um, because then we would be a target. And uh, some pretty god-awful things would be said to you, and some physical things would be at least attempted. So, um, so I, uh, for me, I remember growing up and, uh, and seeing the old Life magazine where everybody came back from, from World War II and there's ticker tape parades in New York and confetti everywhere and, and all of that going on. And, uh, and then when we came home, kind of dead silence or disdain. So uh, it's important for us to say thank you and welcome home. So the Vietnam War commemoration uh, has five objectives according to the government in designating this. And number one is to thank and honor veterans of the Vietnam War, including personnel who are held as prisoners of war and listed as missing in action for their service sacrifice on behalf of the United States and to thank and honor the families of these veterans. Number two, to highlight the service of the armed forces during the Vietnam War and the contribution of federal agencies and government and non-governmental organizations that served with or in support of the armed forces. Three, to pay tribute to the contributions made on the home front by the people of the United States of America during the Vietnam War. Four, to highlight the advances in technology, science, and medicine related to military research conducted during the Vietnam War. And a lot of medical things that happened afterwards, I would say. And lastly, to recognize the contributions and sacrifices made by the allies of the United States during the Vietnam War. So March 29th is a fitting choice for a day honoring Vietnam veterans. It was chosen to be observed in perpetuity as March 29, 1973, the day the United States Military Assistance Command, Vietnam, was disestablished 
as the last day the U.S. combat troops departed Vietnam. Boots up. In addition, and on and around the same day, Hanoi released the last of the acknowledged prisoners of war. The United States of America Vietnam War commemoration honors all veterans who served on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces at any time during November 1, 1955 to May 15, 1975, regardless of location. There are some, uh, some facts that, you know, uh, in the past I, I've given these and, and um, it just kind of brings into reality what, what Vietnam was. So uh, the number of military deployed to Vietnam between 1964 and 1973 was 3.4 million. Killed in action during those same years of 64 to 73, 58,209. The average age of a deployed military member to Vietnam was 19. I got a couple of 19 year old grandkids and a nephew's in the Marines now, so brings it home. Total number of draftees conscript, conscripted into the military during the war was 1.85 million. Those were the days when we had a national draft, which means that 1.55 million enlisted or already serving in the military at the time, 1.55. MIAs from the entire war in Vietnam, 2,646. MIAs repatriated or identified, many on that last day. 1,062, which means that we have 1,584 unaccounted for, still. That's why we have the chair. I've read this before, and, um, and, and it, it's just so meaningful to me that I wanted to read it again and, uh, and share it with you. On March 29, 1973, Army Master Sergeant Max Bilkey boarded a C-130 in Saigon and headed home. Like so many other Vietnam vets, Bilkey's service did not end there. He continued to work as a civilian employee with the Retirement Services Division until September 11, 2001. That day, he lost his life during a meeting when terrorists slammed into the nation's military headquarters, the Pentagon. Bilkey saw the end of what was the longest war in American history and the beginning of what we would become an even longer one. The Vietnam War's place in our national history is remembered March 29th, a day when most schools and workplaces will stay open and observances are typically kept among those of, wartime, of our wartime generation. We of that generation and the American Legion know the significance of National Vietnam War Veterans Day, which has been observed since 2017 when President Trump signed the Vietnam War Veterans Recognition Act. This year marks the 51st anniversary of the day the last U.S. combat troops departed from Vietnam, closing the curtain on a long and complicated part of world history. The first known American fatality 
from the Vietnam War was Air Force Tech Sergeant Richard B. Fitzgibbon, who made the ultimate sacrifice on June 8th, 1956. On September 7th, 1965, his son, Lance Corporal Richard B. Fitzgibbon III, would make the same sacrifice. They both rest at Blue Hill Cemetery in Braintree, Massachusetts. The names of more than 58,000 Americans would eventually be etched for eternity on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington. Even after Saigon fell, we continued and still continue to lose so many more brothers and sisters. Agent Orange related illnesses. My brother, cancer from Agent Orange. Uh, PTSD and other wounds of war take their toll more and more as the years pass. I am proud to say that more than one million Vietnam veterans belong to the American Legion, making the largest segment of our membership. We honor their service. We advocate on their behalf and their needs. We defend the legacy. While historians continue to debate and second guess the strategies and decisions of America's political leaders during the Vietnam War, the noble service of men and women who served there must not be forgotten. It is still not too late to heal old wounds. The next time you see a Vietnam veteran, say thank you for your service. And if you, and as uh, somebody told me uh, uh, very recently, uh, they were out and saw the, uh, they were wearing their colors and somebody came up to them and said, thank you for, uh, for protecting us. And um, that's, that's one I, I haven't heard, but it's very touching. And if you are one of those, as I said earlier, welcome home. To hundreds of thousands of others, like Max Belke, we respect and remember you, though we cannot be together in person just now. And this was written by former national commander of the American Legion, Jim Triola. I now want to introduce to you Lynn Rundell, who, as he does every year, presents us with the names of the Vietnam veterans who have fallen, uh, who had fallen and, uh, and are now remembered in this ceremony, and we hope other ceremonies. These are those who are in Maine and died from Maine. So uh, we also have these plaques on both sides which commemorate the names of the Vietnam casualties and, and uh, KIAs. So uh, uh, Len also is the, uh, the service officer for, uh, for our district, for the American Legion and also Service Officer of the Year uh, for the American Legion. So these are important things uh, to keep in mind. So, Lynn, I, I leave it to you. Thank you, Commander. This day was set aside in 2017 by President Donald Trump. I didn't hear about it until 2021. And I was just out of the hospital. And my wife says, something's happening uptown. 
and uh, you know what it is. And I says, I'm not in the loop right now. <laughs> but we went out there and we figured it out that Post 79, Charles S. Hatch Post 79 was having their first Vietnam veterans. And uh, I says, I gotta be part of that one way or another. I don't care if I shovel snow, I don't care if I mow the grass, I wanna be part of that. And that's because on February 5th, 1975, I joined the Army National Guard down here in Summersworth, New Hampshire. I was 17 years old. I didn't even know what the Army was. However, everybody that was in uniform that I run against absolutely, positively had to be a Vietnam era veteran. Whether you were in Korea, whether you were in Vietnam, whether you were in Spain, whether you were in England, you were a Vietnam veteran. They taught me how to dress, they taught me how to eat, they taught me how to sleep, they taught me everything. So my heart is with those people. I served 24 years with those people. Some of them were in my units from start to finish. So I had to be part of it. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the Vietnam veteran and I'm gonna read some names, okay, they paid the ultimate sacrifice. But a lot of people were stationed where the United States Army or the Air Force or the government figured they ought to be. For every person on the ground, there's 162 people supporting them. They give them the bullets, the beans, the trucks. An army can't run. So they put you where they want to be. And then I was kind of in the background said, well, I didn't go to Vietnam. I can still speak for them. Commander talked about the 38,000 people. Well, in 2017, a handful of us built a float for the 45th reunion of this end of Vietnam. And part of that float was these plaques. Now, we lost two people from the town of Berwick. And I figured the rest of the names were just people they used for fillers. No, it wasn't. And some of you were there the day, and I says, really? I hadn't given much thought to it. So I wrote down 20 random names in pencil on white line paper and I went back to my house. Lo and behold, they were from Maine. Whoever thought of how many people we lost. We lost 338 soldiers from the state of Maine. They come from 151 hamlets, towns, cities, and islands. And I said, oh, in 2022, when we have this, I know what I want to do. Would you let me read 44 names each year until 2029? And then, if I'm still alive, would you let me start again? They said, have at it. So, here I am. Uh, I got some good news. Uh, each year, I do more and more research. And uh, I want you to know that uh, I've read every casualty report for every soldier's name that I'm going to read. And once in a while, I will get a lump in my throat. And it could be the date. It could be the circumstances. Or it could be I really care.
Some wise man once said, when you die, you die twice. You die once when your heart stops beating and your soul takes you to wherever your religion says. The second time you die is when your name is no longer mentioned. And that's my quest. Your name will be mentioned if I have anything to do about it. When I go through these, and sometimes I break down because I've read 19 too many times or 20. And the older I get, at 67, and I'm reading a 20-year-old's name, it reminds me of all the gravy that I got that they never had. They never probably had a steady girlfriend. They might not seen their prom. They never got married. They never had children, and I think of every day how my life is gravy. So that's why I do this. It will be rank, name, age, date of death, city or town they came from, and I'll try to make this quick, but I try to do it the best I can. Sergeant Gregory Alec Slope age 21, Dover Foxtroth, 18 February 1971. Sergeant Daniel Arthur Faust, 22, East Hiram, 10 February 1969. Private Bruce Allen Abdullah, 18, East Holden, 26 October 1971. Major Robert Lee Baker, 40, East Lebanon, 27 November 1970. Sergeant Richard John Stewart, 22, East Lebanon, 12 March 1968. Petty Officer Third Class, Harvey James Douglas, 22, East Sebago, 18 January, 1969. Corporal Leslie Aaron Dalamompo, 20, East Wilton, 20 November, 1969. PFC James Patton Nicholson, 20, Elliot, 2 May, 1968. Sergeant Robert James Wigan, 35, Elliot, 13 February, 1968. PFC Francis George Stevens, 21, Ellsworth, 29 June, 1966. First Lieutenant Dana Leon Gerard, 24, Fairfield, 11 March, 1967. Staff Sergeant Rodney George Jondro, 26, Farmington, 6 August, 1970. Private First Class Gary Oral C. Manchester, 21, Farmington, 26 December, 1969. Lance Corporal David Austin Cox, 19, Fort Fairfield, 17 May, 1968. Corporal Danny Lee Dupree, 19, Fort Fairfield, 22 September, 1969. Specialist 4, Kenneth Lee Higgins, 20, Fort Fairfield, 20, February 1970. Tech Sergeant Kenneth James Bossy, 38, Fort Kent, 
11 June 1966. Corporal Richard Thomas Corvo, 20, Fort Kent, 11 Ju July 1969. Sergeant Joseph Dennis Gagnon, 27, Fort Kent, 22 August 1969. Corporal Benton Machad, 20, Fort Kent, 10 January 1968. Private First Class Theodore Glenn Drew, 21, Freedom, 12 May, 1970. This one, and I said I might have some good news, uh, I worked on it 5 o'clock yesterday morning. Lieutenant Commander Robert Stewart Gustafson, 35, Freiburg, 21 December, 1972. But I got on a website, Missing in Action, Vietnam. His body was recovered in 1970, 1984. He was positively identified and the remains were returned to his hometown. I didn't have that last year. I'm always digging. That's, that's a good one. I was happy about that. My wife wasn't. But what are you doing at 4 o'clock in the morning? Specialist 4, John Bailey, 21, Gardner, 24 February 1969. Private First Class Guy Robert Bean, 21, Gardner. 23 February 1968. That's two hits in a year for a small town. They're missed. Warren Officer Gerald Andrew Dorr, 22, Gardner, 1967. That's three in a row from a small town. Lieutenant Terrence Higgins Hanley, 21, Gardner, 1 January 1968. Four, one a year, one month apart. Missing in action, body not recovered. I'm hoping someday when I go back through this that I'll see that Operation Recovery has found some of these soldiers, and I'll update my list as they do. I'm happy to report that. Staff Sergeant Harold W. Reynolds, 25, Gardner, 22 January 1967. That was two hits in that one town, that you. PFC David Dan Foster, 20, Gray. 5 February 1969. Private First Class James Russell West, 20, Gray, 24 January 1968. Captain Herbert Francis Hardy Jr., 36, Great Pond, 4 March 1964. Now, just for giggles, I says, where's Great Pond? And I looked it up on the map. Now, Great Pond, the population in 1993 was 59 people. What do you think it was in 64? The graduating class must have been one. I'm, I'm just guessing. I, I think this over too much sometimes, but if you had 64, 32 years later, what did you have? You missed this guy, you know? Sergeant Rance Alden McKeon, Jr., 22, Greenville, 4 July, 1968. Sergeant First Class Edward Byron Ryder, 31, Greenville Junction, 31 August, 1969. 
Private First Class Thomas John Moody, 18, Guilford, 21 January 1968. Petty Officer Second Class Joseph Tony Mozzetti, Jr., 24, Hall Quarry, 28 September 1967. Missing in action, body not recovered. Lieutenant Malcolm Arthur Avoy, 26, Hollowell, 18 July 1965. Missing in action, body not recovered. And not always, but most of the time, those are air crashes either at sea or on land. And history has proven that if it was on land, as the years go by, we're getting some of them remains back and they're going to Hawaii and they're being repatriated with their families. So that's the ones at sea is a different story. Uh, John Private, John Irving Clifford, 24, Hollowell, 9 March 1996. Private First Class Leo Edward Machad, 23, Hollowell. 20 January 1968. First Lieutenant Curtis Stewart Anderson, 21, Hamden, 17 January 1969. Captain Louis J. Genesto, 32, Harrison, 24 July 1969. Hospital man Ronald George St. John, 19, Harrison, 16 September 1966. Specialist 4, Vaughn Shaw Morgan, 23, Hollis Center, 30 August 1967. Private First Class Milan Elmer Witten, 21, Hollis Center, 29 October 1996. 1966, excuse me. My eyes a little bit. Sergeant Robert, Robert Emery Wills, 22, Hollis Center, 31 March, 1970. And specialist for Weston Joseph Langley, 19, Holton, 20 November, 1967. There, I said their names. They're not forgotten. And I appreciate Post 79 allowing me to do this. Uh, it means a lot to me. And, uh, but this Project Recover, there's, there's a government agency out there. I've talking to, I've <laughs> talking, I've talked to these people. I was actually at a Legion meeting in uh, Kennebunk Port and two oceanographers came into the meeting and wanted to address the people at that meeting. And I just happened to be there. It'd probably be four months before I was back there again for another meeting. I happened to be there for that one, and they were going out to Kennebunk Port Harbor to get a P-38 Mustang that went down. And what they wanted was anybody that could wake somebody up on a bed that was alive walking the beach that day and saw the splash. And they wanted somebody to go out there and it was in that vicinity. They really thought they had a good idea and they were, they were hopeful because it was such a small search area. They're usually out in Hawaii or open ocean and stuff like that. Last I knew they didn't get it, but they gave it, they had a two week window before they had to be back in Hawaii and stuff like that. But these people are out there and they're, they're bringing people home from all kinds of soldiers and stuff are coming home. So never give up the ship and that's why we have the POW MIH here. They were always hopeful. Thank you very much. It's been an honor. Thanks.
Jocelyn. Um, for me, that's the most emotional part of this entire thing every year, and God bless you for doing that. It's incredibly meaningful, and it kind of brings home to us all. You know, we were boots up and we got home, but a lot of them didn't. And a lot of them are still there. So as is our custom in the last three years, uh, and because we are so blessed to have uh, our honor guard with us, uh, we normally at memorial services have a rifle salute and taps uh, for those who died and, and, uh, and those names that are behind us here and all of them, all 58,000. Uh, but today, the honor guard will give a rifle salute to those who have never come home as well as to those who did come home. So this is to honor both living and dead Vietnam. Honor Guard. arms can be please be seated so we're we're getting to the close of the ceremony and uh, uh, before we do that I would like to uh, I'd like to ask Chaplain Lapierre to give us the benediction. Please remove your hat. Uncover. Our Heavenly Father, with heads uncovered and bowed, we bring this Vietnam veteran ceremony to a close. Before we part and go our separate ways, we pause to th think of our members who are experiencing difficult times. For them and their families, we pray for strength and courage. In the silence of this moment, we dedicate ourselves anew for God and country. Amen. Cover. Please remain standing as we ask the color guard to retire the colors.
said, armed. Order, armed. I want to thank you all for being here today, for coming to the ceremony. Uh, uh, we do a lot of various ceremonies, parades, and, and uh, during the year, for me, this is the most meaningful of all. Um, and uh, that's my personal opinion. But uh, again, I want to thank Lynn Rendell for uh, kind of being the backbone of this. It, uh, it's just a very moving ceremony because of what, what you do, Len. Um, I also want to say that uh, to thank uh, Berwick Community Media for being here today to memorialize this. And with that, this ceremony is ended. Thank you.